all my cells thrill, swept by a surge of splendor. Soul and body stir with a mighty rapture. Light and still more light, like an ocean billows over me, round me. Rigid, stone-like, fixed like a hill or statue, vast my body feels and abears the world's weight. Dire the large descent of the Godhead enters limbs that are mortal. Voiceless, thronged, infinity crowds upon me, presses down a glory of power eternal. Mind and heart grow one with the cosmic wideness, stilled are Earth's murmurs. Swiftly, swiftly crossing the golden spaces, knowledge leaps a torrent of rapid lightnings, thoughts that left the ineffable's flaming mansions blaze in my spirit. Slow the heartbeat's rhythm like a giant hammer's, missioned voices drive to me from God's doorway. Words that live not save upon nature's summits, ecstasy's chariots. All the world is changed to a single oneness. Souls undying, infinite forces meeting, join in God dance, weaving a seamless nature, rhythm of the deathless. Mind and heart and body, one harp of being, cry that anthem, finding the notes eternal. Light and might and bliss and immortal wisdom, clasping forever. Receptivity is the power to receive the divine force, to feel its presence and the presence of the mother in it, and allow it to work, guiding one's sight and will and action. If this power and presence can be felt, and this plasticity made the habit of the consciousness in action, but plasticity to the divine force alone, without bringing in any foreign element. The eventual result is sure. Receptivity depends first of all upon sincerity, on whether one really wants to receive. And then, yes, I believe the principal factors are sincerity and humility. There is nothing that closes you up more than vanity. When you are self-satisfied, 
you have that kind of vanity of not wanting to admit that you lack something that you make mistakes that you are incomplete that you are imperfect there is something in the nature you know which grows stiff in this way which does not want to admit it is this which prevents you from receiving you have however only to try it out and get the experience if by an effort of will you manage to make even a very tiny part of the being admit that ah well yes i am mistaken i should not be like that and i should not do that and should not feel that yes it is a mistake if you manage to make it admit this at first as i said just now it begins by hurting you very much but when you hold on firmly until this is admitted immediately it is open it is open and strangely a flood of light enters and then you feel so glad afterwards so happy that you ask yourself why was i foolish enough to resist so long one must first know how to open himself and then in a great quietude know how to assimilate the forces one has received not to throw them out again one must know how to assimilate them to be receptive is to feel the urge to give and the joy of giving to the divine's work all one has all one is all one does my love is always with you if then you do not feel it it is because you are not capable of receiving it it is your receptivity that is lacking and should be increased for this you must open yourself and one opens oneself only if one gives oneself surely you are trying more or less consciously to draw the forces and the divine love towards you the method is bad give yourself without calculating and without expecting anything in return and then you will become capable of receiving it is always better to try to concentrate at the solar plexus center the place where the flame of aspiration burns to gather in all the energies there and if possible to obtain an attentive silence as though one wanted to listen to something extremely subtle something that demands a complete attention a complete concentration and total silence and then not to move at all not 
to think, not to stir and make that movement of opening so as to receive all that can be received, but taking good care not to try to know what is happening while it is happening. For if one wants to understand or even to observe actively, it keeps up a sort of cerebral activity which is unfavorable to the fullness of the receptivity. To be silent as totally silent as possible in an attentive concentration and then be still. In silence lies the greatest receptivity and in an immobile silence the vastest action is done. Let us learn to be silent so that the Lord may make use of us.